people with stories of hardship and tragedy, both locally and globally, it can be difficult to lean into light when the world around you feels dark. So the question we're asking today is, how can we live positively in a negative world. Well, I'm honored to introduce you to my next guest who will share a few personal reflections on that question. The Right Reverend Phyllis Spiegel is the Episcopal Bishop of more than two dozen congregations that cover Utah and stretch into Northern Arizona. She was selected the 12th Bishop of Utah in 2022. She's passionate about helping others deepen their discipleship through daily practices of faith. The bishop has a daughter who lives in England of all places and she calls her hiking partner her 90 pound Dutch Shepherd mix named Samson. I'm glad he got a mention in this conversation. Yes. Welcome to Studio That's 5, good. Bishop Spiegel. Oh, what a delight to be here. Thank you, Brooke. It's an honor to meet you. I feel of your light and your energy already, and I'm better because of it. So thank you for taking this topic on today for us. Thanks for bringing it out for people. I want to pull one thing that I just mentioned from your introduction to start off our conversation and have you expound on it just a little bit more. You're passionate about helping others deepen their discipleship through daily practices of faith. So I'm thinking for some people that might just be a good habit or a good practice. Mm -hmm. For other people of faith, it might be connecting to their higher power. But why do you feel that daily touch point is so crucial? Daily is what gets it into our, our, the fabric of our being. We call it like spiritual muscle memory, right? Mm. So if you want to do some, it's the new year, right? We've all got these um, uh, new resolutions and we're trying to live into them. And we yeah. know the slippery slope is when we say, I don't have time for that today. And then what happens? So I think the goal with daily is that when you make it, that that's your response, mm -hmm. that you, you're doing, you're, you're having this daily practice, if, if it's gratitude, mm -hmm. or if it's, I want to make sure that I turn my mind to my higher power, to God um, throughout the day. When you do that daily, then when crisis comes in, it's your automatic response. It's in it, you. It's in you. Yeah. You, you know, because you're so used to turning that direction. So daily is really critical. I appreciate that charge. I think we're getting really good about excusing casual living and casual, casual mm. behavior. And certainly there are days when we need to all take a reprieve and a rest. But that personal accountability to daily connect and represent that discipleship, I think, is a really worthy charge. I would almost say that... Um, we should take a rest from uh, email, uh, from mm -hmm. social media, or things that like really draw from us. Mm -hmm. But those are the days we actually need to drop deep into a place of listening or renewal. So I think actually... Agree. <laughs> Agree. I'm on your side. Yeah. I'm on your side. Episcopalians are known for being accepting. And mm -hmm. on your What We Believe page, on your website, one of the top points is we believe God loves you, no exceptions. And I know you also believe strongly in the importance of diversity. You said, quote, welcoming everyone at the table means a constant resizing, shaping, and placement of the table itself. I loved those words and the way you strung them together. How can we be better, Bishop Spiegel, at accepting and loving others without exception? It's one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. You, you, you said, I see your light. Mm -hmm. It means you saw me. So the first thing that we do is wherever we go, whomever we're amongst, think of the good questions to ask. And there's always connection. If we're, if we're related, you know, six degrees of separation, and now with social media and the smaller um, connected world, it's less than that. They've proven it's less than six degrees. That means that within a very short conversation, you and I can find something, not only that a person that we know in common perhaps, but rather a core value that we share. Mm. That's connectivity. When we do that, then we're far less likely to dehumanize someone, mm -hmm. to categorize someone as not being worthy, um, not being someone that should be listened to, cared about, tended to. So the first step is to really find that shared conversation. I think we do a lot of storytelling in the Episcopal Church, and I think that uh, giving people a safe place to, yeah. to share their stories. It seems as humans we tend to lead with differences, and what I hear you saying, right, that connection requires a commonality, and we have more in common than I think we even realize, and that leads to the connection and to that human practice that you described. You know, one of, when we're talking about how do we stay uplifted in, yeah. in a difficult world, yeah. one of the things is we learn new things. And so when we learn new things about other people, we leave with endorphins just surging through. That was a good conversation. That felt great. That felt great. Oh my gosh, I, I met the nicest person today, yeah. right? That, that sort of, so when our world shrinks down just to what we have to do and only the people that we work with, I, I think we're really limited. 
Let's talk more about kind of living in that positive space when the outside world does sometimes feel dark and negative. You say daily purpose, not the grand big purpose of life kind mm -hmm. of an approach, but daily purpose will keep our feet planted in the right direction. One of the things that I learned when I was going through seminary is that when people age, that the thing that will age people the most when their health begins to decline mm -hmm. is lack of purpose. So everyone needs a purpose in life up until literally our last breath. So when I'm working with people who are um, going into hospice, I talk about purpose. And I say, you know, you can smile even if it's with your eyes to the person. So if that's your purpose, to make your caregivers feel seen, noticed, and appreciated, that's a purpose in life. Mm. So it may be the purpose is looking around and saying, there's a neighbor that I have who works really long hours. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take tar charge of their trash can. I can do my trash can and their trash can, right? It doesn't have to be, grand purposes are wonderful, but sometimes we put those off as I don't have to, I, oh, it's not the right time in my life, yeah. but a daily purpose. Yeah a daily purpose we can always find. Ooh, I'm so inspired by your words and I'm thinking of the women I admire most in my life and in my own circle. And they're actually women who purposes aren't being asked of them because there's a time and season in our life when we're expected to rise to certain responsibilities. Mm -hmm. But when you enter maybe a, a more mature phase or mature chapter and something isn't being required or asked of you, the women who can dig deep and create that purpose and hold themselves to that purpose, they're sharing light. That is absolutely beautiful. And I was I just having a conversation out, out as we were waiting yeah. and learning about a skill set that I didn't even know the person I was talking to had. And I yeah. thought I knew a lot of their skill sets. Yeah. There's always something that people can learn about us or we can learn about someone else. It goes back to asking the good question. Yes. But purpose, I, my aunt has the purpose that whenever she is with somebody, she learns something new. That's one of her core value purposes. I love that. So I've done that now in rides, like when you get a, a an Uber. A, a, yeah, I didn't yeah. know if we could say names. Yes, yeah. when, when you when you call for that ride, I that's that's one of my goals is to connect with the driver. Yeah. Because I think it makes their lot, makes us all more interesting. You touched on the gratitude piece, which is so important. I want to quickly ask you in conclusion about this community. You say we need to have, if we want to mm -hmm. stay positive mm -hmm. in a ne seemingly negative world, we have to have a reliance on community. I learned this from the recovery community. If we want to live a, a life that is healthy for us, so if you want to stay off drugs and alcohol, then you need to be around people who are supporting a recovery lifestyle, right? Mm. And so if you, want to, if you want to live a life that has purpose, that is, is uplifting, that fills you with a sense of um, connected well-being, then you need to find that community who has interests maybe that you have yeah. or that would teach you something new, but that you grow with other yeah. people. Yeah. I'm going to close with this quote. I'm going to use your own words against uh -huh. you. In the best of ways, you said this, deepening our daily walk with God profoundly changes the way we walk in the world. Mm -hmm. In conclusion, give me one or two sentences. How will that developing that internal relationship with a higher power change the way we walk in the world? We have to have a power beyond ourselves. If it is up to us, then when the world is crashing down on me, I have no, there's, there's no one in the well with me right? Mm. So I say that the, the Christian life is one lived where no matter if the bottom drops out, we know there is a bottom mm. because we know that God's all loving arms are right there to catch us. So that sense where God goes where people can't. Yeah. And I just feel like if, if you really, it doesn't matter what we name the higher power. It matters that we are in relationship with a power greater than ourselves that gives us purpose, meaning, and also um, that compassionate and loving support. Yes, ultimately pointing our life in a positive direction. You have helped us in that way today. Thank you so much. An honor to meet you. Please come back. Thank you. I We'd will. We'd love to have Blessing. you back. Thank you, bro.